Resident Evil. Resident Evil has got to be one of my top five favorite video game series. But during the 90s, Resident Evil games were something that I watched friends play, thinking I wouldn't enjoy them myself. It wasn't until the GameCube remake of the original Resident Evil, arguably the best remake in gaming history, that I started to really get into the series. This remake has since had an excellent HD remake of its own. But did you know that the original Resident Evil, the basis for the remake, was supposedly during early development, itself intended to be a remake of sorts of another Capcom game, which was a video game adaptation of a 1989 Japanese horror film. This is Sweet Home, the 8-bit forerunner of the survival horror genre and the inspiration for Resident Evil. In January 1989, Sweet Home was released to theaters in Japan. In the years since, it's fallen into obscurity with, as far as I can tell, no official DVD release, and tracking down a legitimate VHS available for import is nearly impossible. The film follows a documentary crew into the dilapidated mansion of the late Ichiro Mamiya, a famous fresco artist whose work they aim to preserve and share with the world. But the crew is soon tormented by the violent ghost of Mamiya's wife, who went insane before her death over the loss of their son. It's certainly not a bad movie, but director Kiyoshi Kurosawa is said to have disowned it over meddling by the producer Juzo Itami. Itami also produced a video game called Sweet Home with Capcom. Concrete information on its development is hard to come by, and it's difficult to say whether Sweet Home the video game was conceived as an adaptation of the film or alongside the film as part of a multimedia project. Directed by Capcom's Tokuro Fujiwara, creator of Ghosts and Goblins and Bionic Commando, Sweet Home creates its own identity, using the plot points of the film as only a very loose basis. It was released on the Famicom in December 1989. Likely due to its gruesome subject matter that Nintendo of America wouldn't have allowed during the NES days, Sweet Home never left Japan. Thankfully, it has a fully playable fan translation released by Gaijin Productions in 2000, which makes it popular as a reproduction cartridge. I played the fan translation via my Japanese Famicom cartridge on the Retron 5. The main cast is the same as the film, and each has a special tool which, while well, some are accurate to the film and others are a bit of a stretch. Producer Kazuo has a lighter, Akiko is portrayed as a nurse with a medical kit, cameraman Taguchi has a camera, art restoration specialist Asuka has a vacuum cleaner, and Kazuo's daughter, Emi, carries around a key that unlocks many of the mansion's doors. Wait a minute. Isn't this like... Whoa! Whoa! In the original Resident Evil, Chris Redfield has a lighter, Jill Valentine is the uh, master of unlocking, and Rebecca Chambers is a medic. Whoa! So what do we do with these last two? Well, what if the cast of Sweet Home actually inspired more than just Capcom's games? Everyone thinks of Ghostbusters when they see Luigi's Mansion, but what if the vacuum cleaner actually came from Sweet Home? And the camera? The, let's say, Fatal Frame? The default names are kind of hard for me to keep track of, so how about this? Chris, Becca, Mio, Luigi, and Jill. Love it. Uh, pretty sure we swapped up a few genders there, but whatever. All right, let's get, whoa, why is everything spinning? 
Oh, wait, okay. So the screen doesn't actually turn upside down, but Sweet Home does have an unusual take on the top-down perspective, with the sprites rotating based on which direction they're moving. I've never seen another game do this, but I got used to it easily enough. Unlike Resident Evil, Sweet Home is actually a straight-up JRPG, Capcom's first. Though the interface takes some getting used to, the five characters can build parties of up to three. What makes this interesting is that you can never have two perfect and balanced parties. There's always going to be at least one group that you're a bit nervous to send wandering about the mansion. Let's call Chris, Jill, and Becca Team Resident Evil, and art preservation experts Mio and Luigi Team Fresco. You can switch characters at any time, and anyone can be moved anywhere in the mansion, either individually or as a group. But don't wander too aimlessly because, oh no. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Ah! That battle intro just gets me. Listen. I just love how it builds the tension and feeds the uncertainty that almost any encounter could be against the most horrible creature. So yes, it's random encounters for the most part, and super basic battle mechanics. The lack of a defend function is annoying, but the most interesting thing is that other characters or groups can be called for help. If they aren't too far away, you can move them over to join the fight. Pretty cool. But fighting monsters isn't to be taken lightly. They can deal heavy damage, cause horribly debilitating status effects, which cause dire emergencies that only Becca can cure. And HP healing tonics are a limited resource. You can only use what you find, but they do fully heal everyone in a party. While they aren't exceedingly rare, you do have to manage HP very differently from your typical JRPG. Though I do have to admit, once I got just a bit past the leveling curve, about halfway through the game, battles got kinda easy. But you will get into other life-threatening situations than just losing HP in battle. Characters can sink into toxic goop or fall when crossing rickety boards. Oh, hang in there, Luigi! If no one can save them in time, well, they're dead. That's right, I'm talking about permadeath. Dang it, Luigi, get it together! If a character does die, you can find items to replace their essential character-specific tools. Much like Resident Evil, inventory space is very limited, and item management is a highlight of the gameplay. Each character can only hold one weapon and two items in addition to their special tool. It's always a tough choice to take a newly discovered item, leaving in its place something else that you never know if you'll need later. While I'm not completely convinced on the authenticity of sources saying that Resident Evil began as a remake of Sweet Home, rather than simply a spiritual successor, Large parts of Resident Evil are undeniably faithful to its Sweet Home Foundation. Like the famous door animations, which cleverly hide load times, well, they were on the Famicom too, clearly not hiding load times. Also, much of the story is revealed through documents scattered throughout the mansion. I particularly like this one, which speaks of this place as a house of residing evil! Whoa! <laughs> I'm sure it's just a bit of fun on the part of the fan translators, but I gotta wonder, what if the original Japanese was warning you about biological hazards? A few puzzles are pretty confusing, with hints about where to go and what to do being vaguely worded at times. The last bit of the game in particular devolved into scouring the entire mansion for items behind previously inaccessible rooms. Wish I'd taken notes. Upon finishing the game, which took me about 12 hours, you'll see a different ending depending on how many characters made it out of the mansion alive. Not only was Sweet Home way ahead of its time, 
but it's still entertaining to this day. It's a fascinating look at a rare example of a movie-inspired game having a much bigger impact than its source material. Even though it is itself somewhat obscure due to its Japanese exclusivity. But no matter how you look at it, there's no doubt that the survival horror genre owes a lot to this old Famicom adventure starring Chris, Jill, Becca, Mio, and Luigi. <laughs>